Well, greetings, church family. This week, he will begin and actually finish reading the book of Zephaniah. Now, many are not that familiar with this small book, but it contains one of the most astounding passages related to the love that God has for his people. Listen to Zephaniah 317. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. I want to answer three questions related to this verse. First, what does it mean? Well, it means that God is with them, and he's more than able to save them <clears throat> from their enemies and their own sins. The language in this verse is similar to other passages that speak of God's love being like that of a bridegroom for his bride. Not only that, but he rejoices over them with gladness. You know, we often think, okay, God chooses to love me in Christ, but he doesn't really enjoy it. You know, how could he? Because of my sin. Well, he most certainly does enjoy saving you. Among other verses that speak of this kind of delight that he has for his people in saving them, consider Jeremiah 32, <clears throat> verse 41. I will rejoice in doing them good, and I will plant them in the land in faithfulness with all my heart and all my soul. God actually enjoys saving you from your sins in Christ and loves you with all his heart and all his soul. And he clearly demonstrates the, the length to which he'll uh, show this love for us in Christ. Zephaniah 317 also says that he will quiet you by his love and he will exult over you with loud singing. What does that mean? Well, this quietness to loudness language poetically demonstrates that any way that love can truly and properly be expressed toward another, God does so towards his people and towards you. Whether it's showing love in quiet contemplation or in exuberant singing, God loves you. Secondly, <clears throat> why is this verse so amazing? Well, it's amazing because of the larger context of the book, which spends a lot of time fo focusing on rebuking the people for their many sins. Sins such as pride, presumption, idolatry, and even thinking that God won't do anything for them, nor will he judge their sins. Does that sound like a people that you would want to save? let alone rejoice over? Be in wonder and marvel at the love of God revealed to us in this verse. Lastly, how is this verse practically relevant to us today? Well, we've already mentioned some things uh, related to its meaning, but perhaps the best way to apply this verse is to think about it and pray it back to God. Passages that seem too good to be true, like this one, are difficult for us to grab hold of and believe because we have many distorted views of God and our sin. This passage is one to wrestle with in prayer, asking him to help you understand and believe in his love. It reminds me of Paul's prayer for the Ephesians in chapter 3, where he prays that God would enable them Give them the power to be able to just begin to grasp his love uh, for them. So wrestle in prayer, asking him to help you understand and, and receive and enjoy the truth of this verse. And then praise him for it. Rejoice in his rejoicing over you this week. And keep reading. Mm -hmm.